Tonight, lockout losses. The employers of Dublin organised a lockout against all employees connected to the Irish Transport and General Workers Union. This caused high unemployment rates and had a knock-on effect in work and education, causing widespread poverty and crime. Good evening. Tonight I'll be looking at how the 1913 lockout affected the work rights and education of the people of Dublin. I went back in time to talk to some people about what was going on. So why are you boys not in school today? We're on strike! Yeah! Yeah! But why are you striking? Because our parents lost their jobs and we need to show the government that we won't stand for it. And it's not right that we're in school all day we can be out working to get money for the family. But is a proper education not important? It is if you can afford it but our parents need us to be able to make the money. What age are you two? What jobs could you possibly get at such a young age? I'm 11. Whatever I can, really. My parents sent me to beg. But I can't do that during school hours and the streets aren't safe for children after dark. I'm 12. Me and my sister sell shoelaces and matches and we have a licence. This one time, my friend was selling shoelaces without a licence and he got sent off to an industrial school. I don't want that to happen. So it seems workers today are truly trying to fight for their rights. Can you tell me what happened on Rutland Street on Thursday? Yeah, there was a demonstration and everyone was cheering for a larkin and then they all started throwing stones and smashing windows and then the police came and chased everyone away. But we weren't there. Oh yeah, we just heard about it. Why were they cheering for larkin? Because larkin is the only person who is standing up for the government and is not afraid to make a difference. Yeah, come on, come on. Larkin! 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 Childhood ended at a very young age. Most children left school at the age of 14, if not younger, to go out and get work. But jobs were limited for adults as well. I got the opportunity to talk to Joe and Fred about what they do. Can you tell me what you do for a living? <laughs> well, I'd hardly call it a living. I work from 6 to 4, Monday to Friday. 6 to 4 on a Saturday. I heat coal in a factory for around 18 shillings a week. Can you tell me why you don't ask for a pay increase? <laughs> <laughs> if we ask for a pay increase, we lose our jobs. So the boss knows that if he sacks me, he'll have 50 lads lined up down the road waiting to take me place. But it must be good to be employed. Well, you're not really employed. Well, you never know whether you're going to get work from day to day. That's right. You have to, you have to queue and wait to be picked. and You can only be picked if you know the foreman of the docks. Or if you buy him a point out of your wages. Is this why trade unions are important? If you're not part of a trade union, sure you have no security in your job. Sure it gives the employers licence to do what they want. They can sack you for the smallest offence, have you working all the hours that God sends. Speaking of which, you're right. Thanks for your time. Give me a box. You may be wondering why there were no women in that last report. That's because work for women was very scarce. Most women had to stop working when they got married. Some worked from home, while well, jobs such as nurses and housemaids went to girls from the country or those from well-to-do families. In the most extreme of cases, women had to turn to prostitution to make a living. Dublin had some of the worst living and working conditions in Europe in 1913. By understanding what people experienced, how difficult their lives were, and the importance of decent work, we can learn a valuable lesson. It was thanks to the brave workers who stood up to their employers during the lockout that change began to happen. Decent work is something we still have to fight for to this day. It looks like that's all we have time for today. 